So to start, you take your electric fence charger and what these come with are usually two alligator clips about like this. Some of them look like this one, which I prefer these because they you can use this as your ground clip a lot easier. Um, these are made to go on like a big battery terminal, like one of those, uh, like a big deep cycle marine battery. But you're not going to need them for this build. So just take your wire clippers and cut them off. And then pull your wires apart a little bit. And then I'm actually going to take because I need a little bit of this wire and you don't need all this long wire inside of your box. So I'm going to take two strands, uh, probably about close to a foot. Cut them off. So I'm going to use these wires to connect the solar charge controller to the deep cycle battery. You can also strip the wires connected to the uh, charge, the fence charger. And then you take these wires that you just stripped and just twist them so they don't fray out and make a mess. So you take your wires from your fence charger and on this solar charge controller there's three, well there's six screws, positive and negative, so there's three areas, uh, three spots for wires to hook into. So you got, on this side it shows a little symbol of a of a uh, solar panel, positive and negative, and the middle is a symbol of a battery, positive and negative, and on the left side it's a light bulb, positive and negative. The light bulb, that side just means what you're powering. So in this case, we are trying to power the um, fence charger and you'll take the positive side of your wire and on the bottom here you're going to need to loosen these first loosen the Phillips head screwdriver or screws in here and that will open a slot on the bottom positive goes in there and then tighten that screw down Stop it going. Alright, that's holding. Now you take your negative side and do the same in the negative terminal side. And just give them a little light pull, and if they don't slip out, it should be good. Alright, now that you got that done, you're going to take the two wires two wires that you previously cut off of your electric fence charger. Hook one of these wires into the positive side of your battery terminal slot and then one in the negative side. Once you have those wires hooked up, you'll take your F2 battery terminal connectors and you just hook one and on one side, the positive side, and one side, and the negative side. Once you have your fence charger connected to your solar charge controller, and your two extra wires connected to your solar charge control controller with the uh, battery terminal connectors connected to them, now you can take your battery, and then make sure, if, especially if you're using two of the same color wires to connect to the battery, Make sure you follow the lead coming from the positive one and hook it in the positive and your negative, hook it in the negative. And you should hear your fence charger start making a little uh, sound and the indicator light will be shining. And then on the solar charge controller you see a number pop up. 12.8 and a fully charged 12 volt battery is actually around 12.6 
some of them range up to 12.8. Um, if it's 12 volts, that means your battery is dead. So um, you want it to be charged up to 12.6 volts at least. So now that you got that all hooked up, if you press this button right here, uh, at least on this charge controller, it should shut the power off. Let's see. There it is. Let's shut the power off. That way it's not going and you won't shock yourself accidentally. So now this assembly is all ready to go into your box. I like to put the battery towards the bottom of the box. That way the weight is down at the bottom. It doesn't, doesn't go sliding around. And these sealed batteries, they can operate in any directions. So you can have them upside down or on their side and it'll be no problem. And you just want to move these wires out of the way. Now you take the wire from your solar panel. These will just go in the slot where it shows the little symbol for the solar panel. And red is positive, black is negative. You just do the same steps as before. When that's all hooked up, your solar panel will be charging your battery in a safe way. If you don't have a solar charge controller, the solar panel can actually overcharge the battery and damage it. And the uh, solar charge controller also will shut off the battery use when the battery gets too low, so that'll also save your battery. So. You could set this up without a um, solar panel and a solar charge controller, but you run the risk of damaging your battery by um, overusing it. So once that's all hooked up, now you're just going to need to hook up your, um, your ground wire and your hot spark wire. So for the spark wire, I just take one of these uh, alligator clips, cut the wire off right at the base, and then I take the wire stripper and strip uh, about three quarters of an inch off. So this wire, a little, the pot, the spark side is going to hook up to the red knob on your fence charger and the ground wire will hook up to the black knob. It might be different colors on different chargers. Just hand tighten it pretty tight and then you'll leave that to the side. Then you'll take your other spare wire and I just pulled this out of an old um, appliance that, or actually it was an old tool that didn't work anymore and just cut one of the wires out of it and you'll strip both ends of this one and then I'll take that old clamp that was on one of my uh, fence chargers and then it's got a perfect spot right here you just hook the wire on here and then tighten that screw hold that wire down make sure it's making a good connection with the exposed wire. This one is. Alright, and then you just strip the back of that wire. Alright, and then you just hook that one onto the ground side of the fence charger. Alright. So then you want these wires to be able to fit on the outside of the box. So I just kind of line up a spot here and there's a little ridge here. I doubt you can see that in the video, but um, I'll just take an eighth inch drill bit. You can drill through it if you're careful. And then put it on the side to clean up the edge. So I do the 
same for the hot wire. mark where it closes on top of your wire and drill out the top of it the same way you did the bottom. Alright, so now lay your wires in the slot you cut in the bottom. Wire should fit out there perfectly and it shouldn't affect your water seal. And then another reason I like these boxes is they have a little clip, flip up thing on the side here. And I just clip the hot and the ground wire right there when I transport it. And it's a one handed operation. Now that we've finished this build, I'll show you how you can hook it up to your electric fence, whether it's a poultry net like this or just a regular uh, cattle fence or a goat fence. So you take it, set it on the ground, and what I'm using is just a metal stake for a grounding rod. You can go about three to four inches deep, that's fine for a small setup like this. You hook up your ground wire to the metal stake, and take your hot wire, hook it up to your fence, anywhere that there's a line that conducts the spark. And you open your uh, charger and press the on button like I showed you during the build. A simple way to test if the electric fence is working is you take a small piece of grass and just touch it to a metal wire on the fence and you should feel a small shocking feeling in your finger, just very small, it doesn't hurt at all. Um, if you don't then something might be grounding out. You might have too many, uh, too much grass touching the bottom of your fence. Or one of your metal wires might be touching a ground wire. So you just have to go around and check that. Subscribe and push the notification button. That way you'll be notified whenever I come out with a new video like this. Thanks for watching.